This is the Tesla one year overview reading for the year of 2024. It's currently November 10th, 2023, 8.42 p.m. Eastern time Tesla at the time of this reading, $243.84. That's USD. And the shuffle video that we were going to play for you here uh, in the lower left corner of the screen was created on June 27th, 2023, 8.05 p.m. Eastern time. That's this video here. The overall theme and behavior for Tesla, like many of the 2024 readings, we have quite a mixed year, multiple highs, multiple lows. But the overall theme is across upward through a key price level on a, on a multi-year scale, then across back down through it uh, and then back up through that same price level one more time. It could be that many times or that could, it could be like multiple times that we're going back and forth and back and forth um behavior and that's crossed with uh, multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance on a, at least a one-year chart scale behavior around the highest side the full card indicates an important opportunity on a multi-year scale um so it'll really stand out looking backward at, at the high of 2024 it'll really stand out amongst other uh, opportunities as like a major opportunity behavior around the low of 2024 is going to be there's an important range that's highlighted uh the, the oppression card in the low significator position can indicate a couple of things either we see the same low multiple times and we're bound by the lo lower end of a range or there's an important the lower end of an important range like a support level on a multi-year scale that's highlighted it's probably both actually um, that's highlighted and we, we come up against it multiple times, um, but we're bound by the range there. Before we go any further, I want to make sure everybody's aware of the whole purpose of the channel is to donate, is to uh, transmute some of the competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. And we do that by following the threefold agreement, the unwritten rule of the between the universe and the people utilizing this information for personal gain. It's called the rule of karma. It's a threefold rule. First off, the first part of the rule, 5% of all profits made from the information on this channel should be donated forward to one of these charities here, effectively su succeeding in the in accomplishing the goal of, of the whole goal of the channel, my friends, which is to transmute competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. So you do that here, 5% of the profits, just click here and donate. And then the second part, 5% of the profits, should be donated back to the channel through one of these links. If you're international, use WISE or you can use YouTube tips. That leaves you at 90%. The third part of the rule is to make sure you spend that money out of love. As long as you follow those rules, the universe considers you an angel investor of the channel. It's going to send it back to you tenfold for following through on the rule of karma. Neglect the follow through, my friends. The universe will shut you off very, very fast. The last thing it wants is people utilizing this information for personal gain alone. So make sure to simultaneously help other people, make the world a better place, and be a part of the army of people, of tarot for traders trading and making the world a better place by donating their rule of karma percentages forward into the world. Blessings to all my angel investors. Let's get back into it. So if you've never seen a one-year reading before, guys, it's important to understand. So each cluster of four cards going left to right across the screen, and it, it, it represents information about one month out of the year. And you can see they're labeled January, February, and so on, right? And then down here, July, August, September, and so on. And what's important to understand is that the two cards in the middle of each cluster going left to right represents about two weeks of time. Um, not each card's energy is going to line up perfectly with two weeks of time. So you have to give the sequence of events. Sometimes the timing will be plus or minus about two weeks. It happens occasionally, not on all readings, but sometimes. If you find yourself off on timing, just follow the sequence of events, and you'll find yourself, uh, that'll keep you on track as far as where you are. And rarely do we stay off on timing for very long. It usually swings right back on plus or plus or minus two weeks and then right back to where it should be. So in early January, we have a rally that increases with momentum moving forward with time. There's a trade opportunity there as well. And an important peak, a cross-reading congruency. I'll talk about it in more detail on the paid version as well, along with that trade opportunity. Behavior around the low for January, we have price swings. Usually when you see the Dominion card in the low signification position, it indicates two lows in the midst of price swings, maybe more, but usually it's two lows. And in a lot of the 2024 readings, we are seeing two lows in January and February. So it would make sense. But there's an important crest there. It'll really stand out as an important crest or peak there towards the later part of January. We'll break the resistance, stay above it briefly, and then break back down and continue down to and break through a key support level on a multi-day scale. And then we'll do a U-shape reversal and come back and reuse that support as support. That support level is highlighted throughout early February. There's usually a lot of price change when you see a princess of this uh, price change involved in like the highlight of an important support level on a one-year chart scale minimum there in early February. And I think probably what we see is a big move to the upside there in early February into a high in late February where we successfully turn resistance on a one-year chart scale into new support. The behavior around February's low will have a rally into key resistance and then a decline from that resistance with consecutively lower spikes up on the way down into the February low, which is very likely there in the early part of February. Later part of February, we have a rally that offers trade opportunity. I'll talk about that in more detail. A lot of trade opportunity in February. I'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. So we go from this peak in late February to a prominent trough in early March. It ends at a trough in early March, and there's a fast sudden refire that ends that decline. That fast sudden refire takes us to a peak or crest that'll stand out on a one-year chart scale. I'm um, advised to be cautious around the March high, mul multiple false tops, or some sort of tricky chart behavior that uh, could make you do the wrong thing or act impulsively. So be very, very careful about making changing your mind about previously made decisions about around that time. Behavior in late March, uh, sideways fluidity, equal amounts of bulls and bears, inflow and outflow. So you usually get like sideways behavior and i think probably see two lows in march one on either end because we've got the art card as the low significator card for march and the art card is a prominent move higher followed by a full retracement right so we've got this move higher out of a trough in early march and then back down into a trough in late march out of that trough in late march we successfully established support with that side of its fluidity. And then there's this big move higher that'll stand out on a one-year chart scale as we enter into April. or in the early part of April. The April high, there's a cross-reading congruency. I'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. And the April high has got a lot of volatility surrounding it with a sharp drop that'll stand out in that period of volatility. Behavior around the April low, it'll form out of a decline. We have a big move from the bottom of a range to the top of a range. That's on a multi-day chart scale. Like when looking at it from a one-year chart scale, there should be a range in there that we go from the bottom to the top. And there's a prominent peak or crest, a prominent trough in early April, a prominent peak or crest in late April after a big move higher, an unexpected move 
much higher to reach that peak. There's a pretty juicy trade in April, May. I'm going to talk about it in more detail in the paid version. Uh, before we go any further, though, let's take a look at 2023 and see how we did. I don't think this was my best reading. It's still pretty good, but I don't think it was my best 2023 rating by any means. So the high ended up being the, in July at this Ace of Wands, which very often the high card. And, you know, reading it now, the Ace of Discs right next to it's indicating to cash out at that opportunity, right? That was the high of July. So I had it as a prominent peak. I didn't have it as a highest high. So that's my bad. But I did have a prominent peak there in July, as well as a prominent trough. We did have a prominent trough in July as well. A lot of price change from the Ace of Wands into that Ace of Discs. I had it for August, September, and then again in October, November, as well as a, a low between September and October, um, as well as the lowest low in May. So, right, so we have this lowest low in May. Boom, nailed that. And then we have a pretty, pretty sharp, like our second lowest low here in October. So September, October, nailed that. We missed the highest side by a little bit, but not by far because we had here in September a highest side. And then we have a highest side here. Uh, looking at it now, it looks like I probably missed the highest high there on the cusp of November, December. So I think probably what we have is mid-December, uh, a notable high. Actually, I don't have it as a high site, and it probably isn't, because we've got some really low significant or uh, like significant low energy here. This is a cross reading congruency on a t on a ten year chart as well, and I'll talk about that in more detail in the paid version. But this is a pretty solid reading, not my best. I, I nailed the lows pretty well. I got I got the prominent highs. I just missed which one was the highest high, just by about twenty points. It's not like a, a huge like I left a lot on the table or anything. And as far as trades, we would have looked to open up a long position, a uh, partial long position here in March at March's low, and then we would have looked to open up more of a long position in the April, May low, and then we would have closed that long position here in uh, June, right? So March is low, May's low. I would open up long, opened up long, and then it, in the June high right here, I would have closed that for a significant profit. And it's telling me to close in June and not in J July. Why? Because look at that drop that people probably sold here is getting scared that they were to lose all their profit before going higher, right? So this would have been the prime place taking psych psychology into account, the common, the common trader. This would have been the best place to close out. Um, we nailed that. So people would have made a lot of money. There are people that have this reading that made a lot of money. And that's just one of many trades that we had throughout the year. Guys, if you're interested in the paid version, what you get is not just the best trades and what type of chart behavior to look for as far as entry and exit and timing. You also get the timing of the highest highs and the lowest lows for the year. You get the any price level information that we're able to extrapolate if we're able to extrapolate because we're not always able to get price info level information. And then you get trade information from relevant from like a multi-year standpoint as well. And the overall performance comparative between Tesla and the S&P 500, which one performs better? All that in the paid version. Great way to support the channel. You get the paid version here on our website, tarotfortraders.com. Go to our services, SO Meta Post. Scroll the one-year report. Click here to order. Select the year you want the prediction to, to predict and then uh, enter the ticker or, or crypto and add to cart to 249 for a year's worth of information. My friends, if you follow any of the lives that we do every single day, every single trading day, there's just about there's a live. You know, so if you follow those, then you see we're using 2023 one year readings today in December that were created in mid like in October of 2022, using them today on a live every single day. And it's 100 percent accurate. So check those out, my friends, if you need some sort of proof. But that's where you go. That's how you support the channel. Thank you to everybody doing that. Let's continue onward. All right, so we have this overbought peak that we sell off from in early part of May. It's like a failed attempt to break the key resistance of a decline through key support. And the thing about that key resistance, it'll be like a res resistance in it that based on chart behavior, we expect to break through. And it's very disappointing when we poke through it and we turn around and we break back down through that price level and some, taking us into another prominent trough in May. There's a prominent peak in the end of May, a prominent trough in the beginning of May. A lot of back and forth going on here, guys really mixed behavior in the later part of May and a real reversal that'll stand out when looking back at the 2024 reading. There'll be a really notable reversal that'll stand out here at the May low. Off of the high towards the very end of the month of May, we have a notable decline through multiple support levels. This should be a pretty a pretty notable decline. One of the biggest declines, I think, of the year here in early June. There's an important resistance level highlighted in the later part of June. We'll kind of flatten out around it, but it's highlighted and maybe two important pr price levels or it may be the same because these two really correlate to each other. We most likely have a June high towards the later part of June. So don't chase the decline into June's early June. There's a June high towards the later part of June. And then a trade opportunity, I'll talk about in more detail in the paid version here in early July with sideways rotation that ends with a fast sudden move higher and a fake out at the July high that is intended to make us do the wrong thing. So be really careful in July. There, it's a, there's a brief peak that's easily missed followed by a decline through multiple support levels taking us into the July low. It looks like the July low is probably in the later part of July when rotating sideways some more and there's a sharp drop within that period of sideways rotation to revisit a support level that was a past op recently a past opportunity. So it might be that the low we see in May, I'll talk about that in more detail in the paid version. We have a, a trough on the cusp and a trade opportunity and then a, another trough the second week of August with a notable move higher and multiple failures attempts to break the key resistance a prominent peak at least one prominent peak there in the later part of august one pumping along resistance sideways and also the august low will be at a, an important support level relevant on a multi-year scale early peaks in september with some price swings and a sideways fluctuating rally into a peak mid-september and then we have a sideways fluctuating decline in late september that the decline into september's low offers opportunity i'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version erratic behavior in early october and we revisit a crest in the midst of that erratic behavior that was recently a past opportunity there's an important price level near the october low that you could trade in both directions around i'll talk about it in more detail again in the paid version and then another notable decline in the later part of october to a prominent trough although i'll say in the early part of october there's a big move pushing the upper end of a range higher to mid october meeting a high there or a peak there and then another peak in early november November that we sell off from pretty notably to revisit a trough that we recently saw. So it's probably the trough from like the later part of October. 
Like there's a rally in between that trough and the trough in early November, right? Because we got a peak at the very beginning of November, most likely. A decline and then out of the low, there's probably two November lows. One in the beginning, we rally higher through resistance. We stay above it briefly. That rally is halted by a decline back down through that same price level and then continuing downward into a, another low towards the end of the month of November. A big move higher in December. Notable trade opportunity on a multi-year type of, of standpoint. I'll get I'll feature that in the paid version at the December high. And then a lot of price change, a lot of volatility around the December high, which is mid to late December. The December low forms when we have a decline through multiple support levels. Then we bounce around one support sideways and break down through multiple more into the no December high, uh, low. And then the sneak preview for 2025, out of a decline or in the face of seemingly overwhelming headwinds, there's a big move higher. It's like an unexpected move higher that will stand out on a multi-year scale out of either very scary chart behavior or really in the face of overwhelming headwinds. But that's Tesla for 2024, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to follow that rule of karma. You know where to go. You know what to do. Blessings to all my angel investors. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned if you got the paid version.